You are now listening to the Too Short for the League podcast, hosted by Caleb Kingston. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to thank our sponsors for bringing the show to you guys. Go like and face your fears. Today we have a great guest. Okay, first woman guest we've ever had. The reason I have I've, I've gotten a woman guest. Okay, is we have a thirty percent woman audience. I didn't know this oh. until I I checked. Granted, it could be because I'm very handsome, <laughs> but <laughs> it might not be. Anyway, our guest Georgia. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, we got some. Do you think you're well known around the league? <laughs> like personality wise, do people know you well? I'd say so. Like I feel like I've been around a while, so yeah. <laughs> probably more so for time than personality. But okay, well, for the people that don't, I'm going to ask you a question, and this question is going to let the people know oh, what God. type of personality you are. Okay? okay. Do you watch much women's basketball, like the college and? Probably too much. Too yeah. much. Okay. You know, Caitlin Clark is, I assume. Yep. All right. Someone's got a gun. Oh Jesus. Okay. They're going to shoot you. Yep. Unless you make a three pointer, you survive. Are you shooting that three-pointer or are you letting Caitlin Clark shoot that three-pointer? Oh, Caitlin Clark? <laughs> you're going to let someone, <laughs> someone else yep. shoot. Nah, thanks. Have you seen some of the shots she's made? Yeah, I know. Her for sure. Do you think you're a shooter or? Uh, yeah, I'd say I'd prefer to shoot than do anything else. Yeah, or well, I saw like on my research on you. Yes, I can Google you. You're up there. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you're big cool. time too. <laughs> um, and your class is mainly a defender. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something you think you're your best at, or would you say it is your shooting? Oh, I'd say defense set me apart. That's probably what got me into the league in the first place. And yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely like that side of the ball. There's, you know, chance to make a bigger impact on the game when you get when you're good on that side of the ball. So yeah, but if I was going to rate something as my best attribute, it'd be defense for sure. Right. And do you think that's learnt, or is it just you're either good at it or you're not, or it's a mindset more than a? I think like it's definitely mindset's a big thing wanting to play it's a big thing but you either got like instinct or do you, or you don't like you've got the ability to read the play or you don't I don't think you can teach that but mm. you can be a solid defender just from wanting to play it in general yeah sweet oh we got an elephant in the room you've swept you swapped teams you've signed with the Redbacks <laughs> yep <laughs> what uh what went into that besides Tim? besides the obvious <laughs> Tim <laughs> Tim yeah the coach uh, yeah uh was pretty pretty solid in staying at uh, Suns mm-hmm. um, with Tim, and then he obviously got the job at Redbacks and kind of threw a spanner in the works. So I just reached out to him and I was just like, uh, "What's the go? Would you be interested in having me come across? Or is there an opportunity for me to play there?" And um, yeah, I think I'm pretty loyal to him. Like I've played a lot of my basketball under him, and I think I play a lot of my best basketball under him. So it was a pretty easy decision to follow him. How many years? Well, three years as a head coach, this will be my third year, and then two years with him at Junior Up under Nixie, so yeah, okay. I've been around him for yeah, five years now. Nice. Yeah. And like so you went after him, like when he left. Yeah. You were like is that as soon as you found out he was leaving, was it like I don't want to be at Suns anymore? Or is it I need to see my options? I definitely like gave like I wanted to give Suns the opportunity to name a head coach and meet them and see who was interested in coming back because I did have a really good time with like that group like, over mm-hmm. the last two years. Um, but I think they were going in a love Suns and love my time there. They were going in a more development kind of um, season and I was like oh, I've kind of been there and done that two years ago when Timmy first came out and I think I've just got so much I need so much more growth to still come in my game before I can kind of sit back and give give my time to the kids so yeah. just wanted to invest in myself a little bit more and um, see where I can get to before I kind of take a step back. And what was the conversation with Tim besides is there a role for me like did you have a timeline of what the Redbacks team is going to look because no offence, you said you didn't want to be in development. You've come to Redbacks, the women's side. Yeah. They're in development stage. <laughs> yeah. I to break that, it yeah. to you. <laughs> no, I think um, having Mickey there was big for me. Like, if Mickey hadn't stayed, I think it would have been a much harder decision. <laughs> um, but having just a little bit more, like... I guess experience in her and Beck and Raya and um, even just Shanae and Brooker, you know, they're still young, but they've played a lot of games in the yeah. league now. So I think just they had a really solid core that if they just added, you know, some local talent um, with experience and then some really solid imports, I thought like we could be just based on what Tim did with us in two years, I thought like we could still be solid and compete. So I think just wanting a little bit more help 
in the experience side was just more of the pull to go to Redbacks than stay at Suns. Okay. Have you already discussed what the Redbacks goals are for the women's side? Not not really. I think obviously from an outside, like we want to play playoffs, definitely. Mm-hmm. We want a big jump there. Um, but we'll probably sit down and have like our team camp in a, in, in a month's time or something when we have pretty much everyone here and, and put put some goals in place from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you've joined the Redbacks because, to be honest, they haven't been the best on that side. <laughs> I think there was one year where the men's were top four and the women's were top four, but then the next year it just went, like, everyone yeah. left. It would have been, like, 2021 or something, right? Because I think yeah. I was at Joondalup when we played the women Redbacks in a semifinal or something. Yeah, so. but, like, that was, like, a big thing at the time to have both Huge. teams yeah. to be really good. So you said you've enjoyed your time at the Suns. Obviously, Kyle said the exact same thing. It's very like a family, like a, t- yeah, a tight-knit really. group yeah. over there. Was there someone on that team, besides Tim, that you really liked? I mean, I think like they have some really good kids coming through. Like Jamie Ferkin's going to be in the league for a long time. Like great kid, and they just they have a really good team morale. Like even my first year there, I think we won like <laughs> three games or yeah. something. But like we we still showed up every week, and we loved each other and loved playing there. I think from the the last year, I think like Aaron Aaron Fisher going there was huge for me. We'd played against each other all through Wobble and growing up and stuff. So it was nice to actually be on the same team as her. And I'm still tight with her now. So she was a big, big part of that journey for me as well. I guess if your team is going to suck, it is a, it's a good thing that you want to be there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it would have been easy for us, especially like we had all this, you know, import go home and um, person quit halfway through the year. Like I think it would have been really easy for us to be like, oh, it's over and what are we even doing? But mm. we showed up every year, uh, every game and we made some really good strides and I think that, that set us up for the year just gone when we added some big names in Mac and Nacho and stuff like and Sam Roscoe. So I think the first year definitely set us up that way. I think they're going to be in a tough situation because they've lost you. Ella's also gone to mm. June Lup now as well. Mm-hmm. I think I think they're going to be in a I think I think they're going to be in a, a yeah. tough situation. Um, but from everyone I've talked to that has played on the Suns or um, currently plays, they love the club. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's is it from the top like the president, the CEO, or whoever runs the, I don't know how their clubs ran. Yeah. Is it from them trickling down, that's how that family aspect's coming about? Yeah. I think they have, like, a lot of life members that are still involved. Um, I mean, Lou is obviously a big one as our, our manager and stuff, but they have so many life members and families that have been around that club from when they were playing. Like, they just really instill in you what it means to play for the Suns and what the Suns mean to them. And um, I absolutely love my time there from, from everyone, like Kim and Scott, who are in, um, obviously, the management are, great humans love them um yeah they definitely really set the foundation on what they want from you and what the expectation is to play at the suns and you really invest in the family aspect and getting down to the kids and making sure everything's full circle for sure what a how have you seen the competition grow because you've been around you are Simon's back at SBL in, in your juniors and you're in wars and then you've come into it when it's NBL one yeah like how much have you seen the competition grow Oh, so much. Like, from my first year with Slammers, like, you just wanted to play. Like, you were just so grateful to be given an opportunity. And I think now, like, just being broadcast all over Australia and getting that exposure is so big and it's bringing so much more talent across to this state too. Mm -hmm. Like, I think back back at SBL days, you could not train and you could play. Like, now if you don't train, you're you're probably not playing. So I think it's just, just... promoted WA basketball and WA athletes so much and you've just got so much more opportunity to go and play elsewhere and like you've got heaps of people going to Europe now and everything so it's just put us on such a big stage and it's so good to see it growing the way it is. Are you a huge advocate for women's basketball elevating in Uh, terms of viewership as well like getting more fans interested? Definitely. Like, I think we play such a different brand to the men mm-hmm. uh, um, and seeing people buy in and want to go and see us play and, and um, understanding that yeah, that's still enjoyable to watch just because we don't play the same way. Yeah. Um, like, seeing people show up to the Lynx games and even when I was with the Lynx, like, having people there watching us was just huge. Like, and yeah. it's great to see people get behind it. Okay. I'm going to... This is how I think we can grow the women's competition. Okay. You can tell me if I'm, I'm dead <laughs> wrong. So... If you go to your casual basketball fan and you go, all right, did you watch this women's game? They go, no, I don't want to watch women's. They're not 
as athletic. They mm. can't shoot. They can't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I know. They mean, can't yeah. shoot as well. They don't do the ankle break. The, the highlight's not there. We should yeah. lower the rim and and whatnot. First of all, you're wrong. <laughs> second, <laughs> second of all, how I think we can bring uh, more fans to the game and more viewers to the game is we just make more fans smarter at the game of basketball. Yes. You. Well, I've talked to coaches previously, and even Nixie said the difference between women's and men's, the coaching them, there's not that much difference except yeah. women just uh, want to learn more yeah. about it. So, again, with my history, I coached men for my first four years, five years. So, four years at Prairie Lakes, one year at, at the Slammers, and then I went coaching women. Yeah, and they're man. like, what's the difference between coaching men and women? And I'm like... Well, there's not really like much difference at all. I think female athletes want more information. So if you have a smarter fan and then when they're watching the game, they're understanding what's happening, Yeah. they don't have to rely on, oh, look, this guy can windmill dunk. Yeah. They can see, oh, like these players are like a lot smarter and like the, the females are, are sm- probably smarter than the men, let's be honest, <laughs> and, and the way they play their game. Because to, to be honest, if I said... On pick and rolls, we're going to ice the weak. The five man's going to be low. Someone's going to be at the nail. And mm. if it goes to the corner, I'm going to X out. That was gibberish to 99% of people, yeah. every like, yeah. what I just said. To everyone, that was absolute gibberish. Yeah. If we can get to a point where basketball fans understand that, that means, yeah. when they're watching a women's game, they're going to be like, oh, wow, like this is actually very entertaining. Yeah. And this is why basketball players, coaches, and oh, I can't say the word analysts. <laughs> That's why yeah. they say that women's competition is actually good. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how we go about doing this, but basketball fans just have to be smarter. Yeah. That way they can appreciate the women's competition more. Yeah. I think it starts from such a young age, like exposing them to to more structure in basketball and understanding, like especially in the women's game, like we, we have to be more fundamentally sound because like, yep. we can't just go out there and be like, oh, yeah, I can dunk over him because I'm 10 foot tall. Like, yeah. um, so I think exposing them to the, at the kids' age and juniors and, and getting them down and investing like and understanding that just because you're not big doesn't mean you can't play in the league. Like Being smart is such an undervalued skill like at this level Mm -hmm. like so undervalued like I watch even the men's game and I think like man if that guy just got it like just had a bit of like basketball IQ he'd be in the NBL like kind of thing non-creepy way I've watched some wobble women's games (laughs) (laughs) non non non-creepy way and from like I think it was an under 18s game or something their rotation on defense was so much better than what the men's could produce Mm -hmm. and it's because the men rely on their wingspan, their length, their athleticism to get into certain positions Mm -hmm. whereas the wobble competition women just generalizing here they do have to know how to rotate and stuff like that and like you seriously don't understand that until your basketball IQ is jacked up a few points so if you don't like the women's game it's probably because you're not intelligent enough (laughs) 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 <laughs> to understand, uh, yeah. I think that's what the college, like women's college games, start done for it out here too. Like, I didn't really watch a lot of like college hoops for ages, and it was probably only the like the last oh, three or four years that I've that I've watched a bit. And just seeing, you know, Kim Mulkey and all these other coaches and Gino and and what like what they expect. Uh, they, they know they've got talented players, but if you can't do what's asked on that side of the ball with rotations and execution on offense, like you're not going to play. Mm-hmm. So I think seeing that exposed on such a higher level now, kids growing up are like, all right, I need to invest in in the basketball IQ side, and I need yeah. to be able to be coachable and and learn different sets and systems. Like it's so much easier to translate from team to team. Yeah. So like, I guess I'm talking to basketball WA here. If they want to grow the women's NBL one, you got to implement smarter coaches in the younger groups yeah. that can teach something like that. And this mm-hmm. is a problem, like, it causes so many problems when you just have parents coaching. Yeah. Obviously, thank you so much that they do that. Yeah, they volu- put their hand up, yeah. And volunteering and stuff like that. Yeah. But then you've got to have coaches for the coaches. Mm-hmm. And it's been talked about, Fage, I talked about it with Nixie and stuff yeah. like that. And it's, I, I'm pretty sure they're aware of the problem, that there's not enough intelligent coaches to be coaching Wobble. And there's yeah. so many divisions and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But now they need to implement coaches for coaches and they start doing that, you get smarter players, you get smarter players, you get more fans for the women. Yeah. This yeah. I thought about this like two weeks ago whilst driving. I'm like, <laughs> why hasn't this been done? It's not just applic- applic- sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> applicable for basketball women's. It would be yeah. applicable for all women's sport. Yep. So if someone comes up to you and says, just make the rim smaller, does that offend you? Yeah. 
Yeah. Definitely. Like, what if someone said, oh, your ball is smaller? Like, uh, I don't really know, I guess, because we've. I've trained with sevens before. Like yeah. it doesn't. I don't feel like it actually impacts the way we play. Obviously, a little bit. Like you shoot a six and then you shoot a seven and you'll be like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Like, but I don't think it impacts like the way we play or like our ability to play the game as much as everyone thinks it does. Yeah. Like, if if you have ten people in front of you, yeah. You got all. Well, I guess all our viewers, and you have to convince them to come watch a game or mm-hmm. just watch it on their screen or whatever mm-hmm. or something like. How would you get them in? I guess just if you want to come and see basketball executed and offenses like run to a tee, mm-hmm. like and see how pretty basketball can look when you move the ball and you and you do the things you're supposed to do, I think it's 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 nice to watch. Like obviously men's is exciting because they're so bouncy and they can get up and do all these spectacular moves. But I think if you want to watch, come and watch a team execute out of timeouts and mm. and draw up plays and. See what see what can happen when you when you follow the X's and O's. Um, definitely come and watch women's hoops. Yeah, I think if you're an upcoming coach, you're a player that's yeah. looking to make it to the next level. Granted, you're going to learn something from watching the men's, but For also, sure. also talented as yeah, yeah. But watch the women's as well because they do grittier things. Yeah, that just men wouldn't need to do because they're way more athletic. Yeah, or oh, even speaking to Jake all like, all the time. Like I'll sit there and be like. Why don't you just take a charge? <laughs> well, no, I can go out and block the shot. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, that's good for you, but like, why don't you just put your body on the line? The amount of men's games I've seen where um, they're driving in and don't they don't do a two foot stop in the keyway, they yeah. just rise up and yeah. Tevin Jackson will do his stupid acrobatic <laughs> crap. <laughs> but then you watch a women's game and pretty much every single player they drive in two foot kick out yeah. or go do a float or something yeah. like that. Yeah, trust me, watch a women's game, you'll learn more about the game. Yeah. There you go. That's how I'm going to grow the women's uh, competition. Yeah. Hey, if, you want to, if you want to come and learn counters, like, yeah. watch the women's game, yeah. What uh, got you into basketball? Oh, that's a long time ago. Uh, I was actually playing netball and basketball like, all growing up like, mm-hmm. as a kid. And, Were you sent um, Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just put you in the middle and just run. Yeah. Um, but one of, my, one of my best friends at school um, asked me to come and play socially and then we were in that team and she asked me to try it for Wobble mm-hmm. with Slimers and um, met, back then it was just you know champ division you didn't have Div 5, Div 6 like yeah, yeah, Div yeah. 7 so um, if you made that team obviously the commitment was you, you'd be there at everything and made that team and just loved it I loved that you could do everything like netball you're obviously confined to your thirds and, and whatever and um, yeah just fell in love with being able to do everything and be on a team and be with such good friends and um yeah, just f- fell in love with it from there and followed it on from there. Oh, you're from South? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So been in Bunbury, b- was born in Perth, but was in Bunbury from about 8 to 18. Yeah. How did you find having to travel up? Is that every second weekend you have to go up? Wobble was, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much every second weekend. Um, SBL was every weekend nearly if you had a double header, you played Friday night at home and then up, up in Perth on Saturday and um Travel was definitely, I think about it now and how sore I am after games now. Yeah. And I'm like, man, we used to just get in the car, drive for two hours, rock up and play. Yeah. There's no way I'm doing that now. <laughs> like, I'm after not the being game, go run. get Maccas. Yeah, yeah. Game go to Maccas on the way home. Thinking, yeah. Um, travel was definitely big, but I don't feel like it ever hindered us or like um, made us any less competitive. But mm. it's definitely funny hearing, you know, Metro kids and stuff. Oh, it's so far. And I'm yeah. like, you go once a year. Like, give me a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did, um, when, you, when you were playing, you said you only had the one division yeah do you think that helped in your development because you had to stay similar similar group yeah the entire time yeah i think it definitely helped um like our development as a group and even just our ability to to be competitive and win like i think we won six to 15s and 16s back to back because we had the exact same group Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas some other teams were you know you had bottom ages and top ages and then they split and I think having one division was so good for us because you knew you had to be good to make the team like there was no I can just show up and yeah. I'm going to be put on a team kind of thing so what's your viewpoint on that being f- up there's five divisions now I know five divisions for the same age group is outrageous to me I agree like I think it's somewhat a money grab for BWA like obviously they can get more kids playing more money for them which is great and whatever but I think it just sets 
it sets it up to be such a bad transition from like wobble to D League, D League to NBL one. Like, because kids just show up and think, well, I've played wobble, like, I should be guaranteed a spot. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, there's twelve spots. Yeah, and you've got from your suburb, you've got what fifty kids trying to make those twelve spots. So I think it's just it makes it a really hard transition for kids, and that's why I think you see so many people drop off after eighteens. Yeah, because they they've not had to compete for that spot um, and then as soon as they are shown that well you have to beat this kid it's not too hard and I'll go and try a different sport so I think while it can be good in promoting basketball and getting money and, and you know developing us as a business I think it just makes that it spreads the gap from juniors to, to uh, seniors so much yeah would you if you're a CEO <laughs> would you get rid of all the divisions have a lot of domestic comps yeah and then just have it, you know, if you're good enough, you're good enough. If you're not, sorry. I think, like, two divisions is, like, probably, like, as far as it should go. Like, just... Yep, top age, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. Even three, like, top age, bottom age, and then the best of the best. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess when we grew up, like, we didn't have the whole 14s, 16s. We had 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s, like, oh, every year group. Yeah. Okay. So, like, yeah, for, for every two years, I reckon, yeah, two or three teams, like, max. Um, And, yeah, just make your money through domestic. Like, I think the good thing about... Like even being at Kalamunda, like and Joondalup, like they're run year round. Whereas like other other sub, like I know being down in Bunbury, it's summer, summer domestic, and that's it. So you're re- relying on six months of the year to provide money to mm-hmm. to to fund your NBL one team. Whereas if you're running domestic year round, like twelve months is just going to help that so much more. Yeah, and you find a lot of the smaller clubs, they'll have a lot less stress on them if there wasn't so many divisions. Yeah, I just got an email from Redbacks for expression of interest for coaching. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was like five. Five teams on there, or, and the season starts soon. Yeah, and they still don't have coaches just because yeah. there's so many divisions. Oh, even at even at Kalamunda was like that. I think they had like 88 teams or something. They were telling me when we were there last year, and then they, they're just putting, you know, they got to put heat on NBL one players to want to coach. And like, I'm all for that, but like being able to commit to two sessions a week already for NBL one, and then trying to get to a wobble team, and then yeah. trying to get to their games. Like I 100% want to coach when I'm done playing, but. Mm-hmm. While I'm healthy enough and fit enough to play, like I'm investing there, and and I'll. How old are you, by the way? Do I what? How old are you, by the way? Twenty four. Twenty four. Oh, yeah. you can still go. Ages. I know people think. I <laughs> mean, people think I'm so much older just because I've been around yeah. for ages. But yeah, no, I think you still got ages until you're. Yeah, see how long the body will let me go for. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go from there. Uh, how long do you reckon you can go? Oh, 40? 40, Jesus. I think Seville would love for me to do that, like, and, and crack 500 with him. And But he's in impeccable shape, man. I don't think that, that'll be a thing. If I get to 30, I'll be happy. Yeah. Uh, Who is the current uh, games leader for girls? Casey Mohlovic. How many? She's oh, she's pl- she's more than Seba. Oh. She's co- she cracked the 500 a year ago or something, didn't she? Uh, I've not. I think she's up there, yeah. To be honest... I don't watch that many women. <laughs> I think she's like, yeah, in the 500s and she's had like two kids in that time. Like, wow. Is that something you're going to aim hungry. for? Hell no. No? Like, I like to have a kid and then come back, man. <laughs> just even watching Chiba do it in the women and being around Kayla Steindl when she did it, I was like, you are just on another level. I think if I, yeah, if I got into shape to have a kid, there's no way. I'm <laughs> tapping out. I'm coaching, like guaranteed. <laughs> Well, on the topics of having kids, no, I'm not going to ask you if you're going to have a kid, <laughs> but you have a, a relationship with someone that's in the NBL one. Are you smarter than him in basketball terms? <laughs> oh, oh, uh, that's a tough one. Like, I think he offers like a lot of things that I don't. And I well, think, are you you getting home in the car? I'm like, you should have set a pin down. Oh, like, we <laughs> definitely are. Like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Like, um, well, we definitely have some of those. Um, but I think part of like why we have been able to, you know, be together for as long as we have right now is I have so much admiration admiration for the way he plays and the mm-hmm. things that he does. Um, and I think I would hope that it's somewhat. Come back at me, yeah. <laughs> but um, I would probably say he's smarter for a lot of lot more possessions of the game. Like I think I'm, he's more calm, mm-hmm. so he makes decisions um, in a way more timely manner than I do. I think I ride the waves a bit of basketball. So if we're going well, it's going well. If it's not, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> did it, did him playing for Redbacks have any? Actually, no. Like so many people have asked this, yeah, and um, like obviously valid question but 
I didn't have any interest in coming to Redbacks um, until Tim. Because I think as much as it's nice to be at the same club now, like it was also super healthy for us not being at the same club. And I liked being able to show up to games and just be just be a partner and watch and fan and not playing for the women's team. Mm-hmm. So it'll be nice to see more games. Um, but, yeah, him not being here didn't have too much impact because we live together. So yeah. <laughs> I'll see him anyway. Now, this question. This is going to be a hard-hitting question, this okay. one. You, Mosa versus any other couple that's <laughs> <laughs> 2v2 are you taking it all you got Bri and Taylor there's Zoe and oh, her boyfriend and Luca please <laughs> <laughs> love them too love them to death but please, have you seen the size of both of them <laughs> Luca guarding Jacob like please <laughs> um oh that'd be t- Taylor and Bri would be tough like Taylor's a bit crafty but um no I'd take us I'd take us Mickey, yeah. Mickey and Kaiden I reckon would give us a a good run really like just because me and Mickey are super similar like I don't think no offence Kaiden but yeah, <laughs> no I'm you. saying my wise like me and Mickey are super similar but I'd be hoping he just <laughs> take Kaiden to the block and <laughs> yeah. post up but to be fair um, Kaiden is sneaky strong he is yeah, and he plays bigger than his size yeah, he's got 100%. like farm strength like, I don't know where it came from <laughs> hey what, we're having these runs I've said this before but we're having these runs NBL 1 D League runs and I was there for whatever reason and Kaiden set a back pick on me and it floored me to the ground straight away. I was like, what the heck did yeah. I just get hit by? And Kaiden starts laughing. Yeah. Granted, he has like 20 kilos on me, yeah. but holy crap, he is strong. Yeah, watching him the last, even just the last couple of years um, just plays way bigger than what he is. Mm. So um, they'd probably give us some problems, but I'd like to think that we'd be, but, over the course of first to 11, we'll be there. Yeah, my proposal then. Since they don't do the SBL All Star game anymore, I oh, know that was so fun to be a part. Do a two v two tournament. Oh, you can, if you're a partner, you can sign up. <laughs> go to town. I reckon that would bring heaps of viewers. Yeah, re- yeah for sure. <laughs> how many how many couples though do we have in the league? What would be? Like think of it. I could only think of three. But there's the sneak. You know the sneaky ones. Yeah, yeah. The ones that don't want. Yeah, to Henry be. and Ella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. To right? be fair, I'm not going to be rude, but. They wouldn't stand a chance. No, nah, <laughs> Henry's too small. Like, love that. Like, I love Henry, like, and so does Jake, but too small. Mate. He might have a chance against Luca, but then it'll be back in. Like. No. <laughs> Face Your Fears is a proud sponsor of the Too Short for the Leak podcast. Face Your Fears was established by former MMA and heavyweight champion So the Hulk after hanging up his gloves. Now an author, actor, coach, and public speaker, Soa is also a strong advocate for mental health. To learn more about Soa and Face Your Fears, visit faceyourfears.co. What age was it when you were playing basketball and you're like, okay, I can take this somewhere? Oh, that's actually a tough one because it probably wasn't until um, I think like my second year in the league. I, I would have been 16, 17 mm-hmm. um, when I was actually playing. Uh, Tori Dugan was playing with us and she was obviously playing in Canada for college and she'd asked me if I wanted to. It was interesting going. Like I hadn't even thought college was really an option. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably not until then. And yeah, then it all, it kind of happened really fast. I'd signed there and whatever, and obviously didn't end up going. Um, but yeah, it probably wasn't until 16, 16, 17 that I was like... That's still oh. pretty young. Yeah. Because granted, like for a male basketball athlete, they'll figure it out as soon as they grow over six foot three <laughs> by the age of 14, yeah. Yeah. 15 and 16. So the fact yeah. that you were able to figure it out at 16 that you could take it somewhere still... Yeah. Still relatively young. Yeah, probably younger than, yeah, obviously, like, a, a lot of people. I think, yeah, it wasn't really in that until that interest came from, like, another country, yeah. really, that I was like, oh, okay, that's that's an option, cool. Um, and then, obviously, hadn't really grown up with m- much of my family being heavily involved in sport mm. to, to, like, that professional standard. So it was a bit bit of a like, eye-opening experience for my whole family. So, so before, like, growing up and stuff, were you taking basketball seriously? Or was it just... I'm coming to trainings, I'm preparing, I'm playing, but I'm not 
hitting the gym. I'm not eating food. Oh, I'm, I'm not sleeping. I hadn't seen the gym until Lynx. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had never been in the gym until Lynx. And Sammy Whitcomb will tell you that. Um, yeah. Rocked up 50 kilos or something. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I was just still playing pretty much whatever I could get my hands on. It was netball, soccer, playing a bit of footy because Dad played footy. And um, me and my brother were heavy swimmers as well. Mm. So pretty much just, you know, typical kid just trying to play whatever you could get your hands on until probably until that year. Yeah. yeah. And then you went two cons no like yeah I was going I was two weeks from going out and uh, Andy Stewart came to our la- the last game I was going to play um, for Slammers and actually yeah I was sitting with mum in the crowd and was like yeah, um, is Georgia going to go because uh, we'd really love her to come be a development player for the Lynx Oh, okay. So, yeah, I was in, had two weeks to decide pretty much, and um, I was just in super overwhelmed, obviously still pretty young, and didn't want to let anyone down. And yeah. um, ended up just deciding that with the team that he'd put together, like that team had Sammy Wickham, Alice Kunek, uh, Courtney Williams was a gun import, like just thought I would develop more playing against people that are already established and already, you know, WNBA ready bodies. and. I think it thought it would have just fast tracked my development more than playing against kids my own age. Mm-hmm. Um, so decided to stay and move to Perth to live with my aunt and uncle, and yeah, went from there really. Where was the college? It was in Canada. Yeah, Alberta. Uh, Had you travelled there before? No. So you didn't know like how cold. I was going basically because Tori was like, yeah, Tori Dugan was like, um, we'd really love you to come and we think we could help you. And it was kind of a bit of a uh, Perth bubble really over there because they took Saya Black a couple of years later and Taylor Pipes and stuff. So sort of like Saya Mary is just taking Australians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, what import can we get all from Perth? Yeah. 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 So you had no idea about the cold there? Absolutely. Or? And Tori had kind of obviously said like it was cold and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing some of the photos of snow and I remember... I didn't go I, that year. I didn't go. She she called and um, they'd been snowed out of the gym. Like couldn't even get into the gym, and I was like, Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you regret your decision at all? Or, like you're happy you went? Um, no, I don't. I wouldn't say I regret it. Like I think I learnt. I think I would have learnt regardless. Like either decision I made, I think I would have developed. I think just obviously in different ways. Like being away from home would have developed. Um, playing with adults obviously developed. Like I um, got to have a really good relationship with Kayla Steindl and. Um, um, yeah, Alex Chibatoni and stuff. So definitely fast-tracked my IQ, I would say, uh, playing with them. So I don't regret it at all. It was a great experience and kind of taught me at a really young age what it takes to play at that level and, and be a professional athlete. So I don't, definitely don't regret it. So were you different to your peers in terms of how you went to basketball or was yeah. it sort of the same? Like are you, like Taylor Young was going to be – he admitted to it. He was sort of slacking around. He was just getting there – purely off talent were you the same or um I think no just because like if I think back to my team that I had like growing up through Wobble like I wouldn't say I was like the least skilled on the team but like we had you know Taylor East was like really solid Tiana Sears going to college like Cass Anderson like we had some really good athletes that had already had interest um from college teams and stuff so uh, in our team and state level uh, tournaments and stuff so I wouldn't have said that I just got there on my talent I think I was just I really loved playing mm-hmm. like um and I think I identified really early that my point of difference could could be that I can defend like that I can yeah. defend people and that I could get my foot in the door that way I think I understood early that playing at the next level like you don't need to score 40 points you already got someone who can go and do that like what are you going to bring to the table that's different on my googling of you, again, you're big time. I can Google you. You played two scrimmage games for them, or did you end up playing actual games for Lynx? Yeah, yeah, I played two seasons there. Actual like like in the game, like yeah, in yeah. the game. Yeah, my first year, actually, my first year and second year were like polar opposites. Like first year, um, we were obviously really, really good. Um, At seventeen. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I got to got to play. Bits and bobs, like I think one game I got to play like the whole fourth quarter because we were up like super big. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went in, I would have played, you know, a couple minutes here and there throughout the throughout the um, season. But then, then the second year was, we obviously, we contracted 12, whereas the year before we only contracted nine. Wow. So that he could suit up three, three de- uh, development kids every, every week and provide opportunities. So the opportunities were few and far between like the second year. But I think still great in development but I, yeah I definitely got to play more than I probably would have thought going in yeah like, yeah was that you loved it or 
the uh, Burdick and Blitz in Townsville, like that was like, whoa. <laughs> like, I think I remember me and uh, Izzy Miotti, like I love Izzy, we subbed in and I think like the first play, um, Sammy Wickham just fired the ball at us, like th- I think at me at a back cut and just bounced straight off my forehead yep. and out of court and I was straight away like, yeah, okay. Like, a lot is, faster and stronger. This, yeah, this is a lot more like, yeah, just everything's at a faster pace, way more physical. Um, you just have to be so much more aware um, and just ready, like ready to play. Um, mm. So, so super grateful for that experience, and I think it set us up because, like, we both ran with it and for the, from the rest of that year on. So, how did so you were in wobble in sixteens? Yep. And then SBO at the same time, or. Mm-hmm. So you're playing... Oh, we'll play... That's what I laugh about watching kids now and they're like, oh, if I'm playing NBL 1, I'm not playing D-League. Yeah. Jesus Christ. When we grew up, we were playing Wobble, D-League. You were playing just whatever you could get your hands so on. So that's the same right. thing when I was playing. You are playing under 20s, you could play D-League yep. and then you could be NBL 1 as well. Yeah. Then the next year, they got rid of it and I was like, I know. why are we load managing people kids. in this comp? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. The only... The only like somewhat rule I kind of understand now is if you start NBL one, you can't play D League. Yeah. Like which I I kind of guess, but like but yeah, the whole not being able to play multiple age groups is just beyond me because like you, the more development you get is the more the more you play in the sport at the end of the day. So yeah, there's kids that are only going to play five minutes of D League a week. Yeah. yeah. But then they can't. Go, they're not allowed to go play wobble. Yeah. And I don't know who set that standard yeah, or if it either. was a rule that basketball WA wanted because maybe it seems unfair yeah. like, I don't know where it came from but when I was playing I had to go up against NB1 players yeah. I had to go up against D-League players yeah. like, I, honestly I wish they would bring it back when I was coaching the under 20s yeah. I was trying to get Devin Craig and Toby Martin on my yeah. team that didn't allow it because they were on D-League and NBL 1. So that was the first season they didn't allow it. I was like, oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I will never understand that because, like, yeah, I think, again, that even just when I think about that young group that came through at Slimers that have they've all gone on to, you know, pretty solid careers in NBL 1, like with me, Raya Thompson, who I play with yep. now, um, Taya Burrows, like, we were getting to play, like, yeah, your age group, D-League, and then NBL 1, like... And I just think it fast tracked our development so much more because you're just getting to play as much as you could. And yeah, and, and there's such different levels as well. In your under twenties, yep. you'll have to be a leader on the team. Yeah. In your D league, you yep. can you can sort of be a leader, but then develop, and then in NBL one, you're fitting a role. Yeah. Like that's what I think it, mm-hmm. it should be for. Like I'll give you a story. Do you know who Lockie Bertram is? Yep. It will be. He was NBL one, D league, and under twenties. Yep. NBL one just on the bench but we'll get minutes every mm-hmm. now and then D-League he was fitting a role <laughs> and, and under 20s he was averaging 45 a game yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that went straight to his head and I'll say that to his face like, that went to his head <laughs> granted he was good enough to do it yeah. but I feel like more people should be doing that like yep. younger age groups should just be playing as much as they can mm-hmm. if your club has said no you can't ask them why Yeah. And like, push it back yeah. Yeah, and you're going to get more development out of it if I can play Yeah. That's that's like when like you know I'm a trainer and people come up to me and go like how can I get big I'm like well get in the gym yeah lift (laughs) yeah like yeah how can I get better at basketball train basketball yeah it's like you know when you see those sports specific movements in the gym Mm. it's like yeah that would help two percent but what would help 98 percent is actually doing doing the sport yeah like how can I get faster run yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know maybe try Granted, <laughs> a single leg lunge might help a little bit yeah. but just run like yeah. that's and it was the same principle for basketball yeah if you want to get better at it play it yeah so if you're at that level try just play it as much as you can yeah i think that's one good thing that like slammers did for us especially that group like what big loops uh, leaps that taya burrows took like being able to play all that she's just such a talent like and being able to play in those three divisions and um be be a dominant scorer that she was in her 18s and then come to d league and and bring some of that with her and then fill such a big role in an nbl one team like i think it just makes you so much like have such a bigger ability to translate from team to team if you can play in multiple different roles mm. and um yeah if you're not getting to play how you mentioned not only that if you know if you get to play different roles on different teams you get to figure out how you can mold yourself to yeah. certain teams yeah definitely how you can impact in different ways and and what each team needs from you mm. do you have any funny stories from playing the links that you're allowed to say or <laughs> I just say a name or, and or most state, people or, wouldn't be able to guess. Uh, <laughs> Kayla Steindl was definitely an interesting cat. What'd she do? Like, probably not super appropriate to be, uh-huh. but I think just um, 
being around adults as a 17 year old kid um you know change rooms you would you would go to the toilet to get changed Mm -hmm. and they're just so free and so just happy with where they're at that you can just have a full conversation with you in no clothes yeah okay (laughs) now i've heard some funny stories about uh, about like state teams and stuff like that so like granted like yeah obviously it's gonna be funny stories oh just probably can't a lot of them probably not. Like I reckon Chiba and and um, Kayla are probably two of the most crude people I've ever played with. <laughs> and like be, actually being back with Del Del Liscom in this state, oh, man, that just takes me back because I'm um, like you. Everything she says, I'm just like, oh my god, you were yeah. Kayla. Like like she calls me G Banger. That's my nickname. G Banger. Any time I touch the ball at training is G Banger. So if I go to the MC of the Redbacks games and go every time Georgia touches it, just go G Banger. Yeah, De- Dell's there. Dell's on the bed. If I hit a shot, it'll be yeah, G Banger, guaranteed. What's like, the story behind it? Really? I don't even know. Oh, <laughs> I'd come to one training session and it was there. That's the nickname you got. Yep. Do you like it? I don't think I have a choice <laughs> to be honest. But um, I to be fair, I got to. Uh, meet a lot of the girls last year and, and uh, develop like a bit of a relationship just through um, going out and supporting him and, and us kicking on and stuff after games mm-hmm. um, and obviously having a really good relationship with Mickey helped that but um, I think definitely having that relationship kind of already there made the transition this year so much easier and yeah it's, it's been such an easy transition to playing with the group this year and I'm super excited to see what we can do. Do you have any advice for upcoming women's players? <sighs> Just, yeah, know what you're good at. Mm-hmm. Like, know what you... If you don't know, ask. Like, um, and then just really work on that. Like, understand that you don't have to be... Don't compare yourself, like, to other people is a big thing. Like, um, understand that what you do is different to what anyone else can do. Um, and just really enjoy the game. Like, but also understand that basketball is not your whole life. It's not who you are. Um, I think once I figured, figured out that I have other interests and other hobbies... Um, made basketball way more enjoyable and way easier to play so just understand that yeah it's don't it doesn't define you um have have things that you can go to and step away and and then make sure basketball is a release not not your whole world mm. definitely would you give advice in terms of go ask talk to everyone like go up to coaches and be like hey i'm available yeah definitely put if you want if you want to play or, or you want to um yeah grow put your name out there put your feelers out um because especially I feel like in WA basketball, like, I don't know why, but there's such a concept of you, you've got to be loyal. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to stay and play for one club your whole career and, and whatever. So, like, like in Carl's situation, no one's coming to knock on your door if, if they don't know that you're interested in playing elsewhere. Yeah. So I think definitely um, putting, if you are interested, putting your feelers out there and making it known that um, if someone wants you that, that you're interested in seeing what's, a, what's the best fit for you. That loyalty thing is a oh, huge one. So big. As a player, it would be a lot more difficult. But, like, I played for Redbacks. I'm obviously a fan of Redbacks. Yep. I would not go coach for another club. Mm-hmm. My friends have left Redbacks and gone to other clubs. Mm-hmm. I don't watch their games. <laughs> <laughs> I can't want to go into the Redbacks one. Yeah. Granted, my best friend is now an assistant coach on the Redbacks, so yep. there is more reason to stay. Mm-hmm. But even if he left, like, I'm still going to watch the Redbacks games and, and and stuff like that. So yeah. loyalty is a is a big one. So I guess it's a good uh, value to have. Oh, big time! But if you're looking to play, yeah, you have to put your feelers out there. I think just especially with how like much more professional this league's got, like the more more business related it gets, like it's a transaction at the end of the day. If like you're not doing what you need to be doing, the club's looking elsewhere anyway. No matter how loyal you are, mm-hmm. um, and I think loyalty's shown in multiple different ways, like. Um, for me, I it was super hard to to leave Joondalup in the first place. Yep. Um, wasn't as easy to leave Suns as a lot of people probably think. Um, but I think like I'm I I sit there and I can hold my head high like I'm loyal to Tim. Like Tim's had my back since he got a head coaching gig. So if he's going to ask me to go anywhere, I'll always give him the benefit of the doubt. And uh, people that. I know I'm going to have outside of basketball, I'll always be loyal to them because I know as soon as you're done playing, people that think that they love you, as soon as you're not offering them what they need, that ship sailed. <laughs> like, I thought there was heaps of people at Joondalup that I would have stayed in contact with and no. it hasn't happened. Like, so it's just it's a business at the end of the day. Like, yeah. You've got to find who's there for you and stay with them. Out of all the clubs you've been at, was Wolves like the best, well, most well-ran club? For sure. 
Yeah. Right. I had no, literally no interest in leaving Wolves. Mm-hmm. Um, if Tim had got the job there, I'd <laughs> probably still be there now. Um, but it is what it is, and they have so many great people up there. I, every time I go back up there, I, I love going back up there and seeing everyone that's there. But by far the most professional. Like, anything you need, want, could ever want, yeah. is right there. And they'll jump at anything to offer you, to, to get you in the door. And I think they just set up game nights is obviously so great but just the resources are so much more better they just have so much money like at the end of the yeah, day yeah. you can't really compete with money yeah like, but doesn't mean everyone's going to stay there either they seem to have a good turnover ratio of players every year so i think they're a good window to putting you on to what's better like you yeah. know, obviously translate a lot of people over to uh, nbl one south and queensland and overseas so if you want to get your foot in the door into bigger and higher leagues, like they're a great, they're a great advocate for that. Do you think like presidents and CEOs of other clubs should be asking players that have played for really good clubs, like a Hawks or a Perry Lakes, like how they ran, and then yeah. so they can implement sort of those things? Yeah, I think uh, that's one thing Suns definitely did. Like when um, I left, uh, Kim and Scott definitely asked me, you know, like what what the differences were between here and um, and Joondalup and like what I, what I think they can do. I think if you're not chasing to be better or to strive to be, you know, those big name clubs, then you're just going to get left in the dust the, mm-hmm. the more money this league makes. So I think definitely should be asked more, like even – Obviously, you're not going to go and ask the club themselves. So, yeah, ask the people that have played there and spent a bit of time there. And Suns have been really lucky to have Seb, Seb there for the last few years. So if you're not picking his brain, you're probably you're missing out on a huge opportunity. I'm not going to talk bad about the Redbacks women. You know, I love Redbacks. <laughs> but they've had two coaches just quit. Various reasons, obviously. Yeah. But, like, it's not the greatest look for yeah. outside players. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the floor here. Try yeah. recruit, like recruit some imports, recruit some players that you know Redbacks can just go send this out, and, and then they'll be like, "All right, I want to come play for Redbacks." Well, we we've we've got one that, that'll be announced soon. That's okay. a jet, so don't worry. Are, are you allowed the same amount as the men's comp for imports? I don't know. Depends <laughs> on what. <laughs> depends on the, what number the men are told. I guess we're told that we got the same budget as the men is what we've been told. But so it's just a budget thing, like yeah. Well, I think we're allowed sure. two imports, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're allowed. We're definitely allowed two imports. Two, okay. We're still looking for a second. But, but you just have to fit them in the budget. Yeah. Or yeah. finagle away to make it look like it's in yeah. the budget. Yeah. I wonder how yeah, many teams are doing that. Just hire them as an employee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many teams are doing that. Yeah. Um, but I guess I think Tim Tim's done a really good job. One good thing he did at Suns was you know show the league and people that weren't playing there his ability to turn a turn a club around Mm -hmm. like he got that club pretty much with a clean slate and you recruit from the ground up and from three wins one year to you know pushing pushing a warwick team the year later and not even just knocking them off in their ring ceremony the round one i think just his ability to to develop a culture and a system that people want to come and play at Mm -hmm. like um i think give us a year and, and people want to come and be at Redbacks. Like yeah. if we do, if he's able to impact the way he was at Suns, I think, um, you know, it's already such a good environment. Obviously the girls get on and they're such a united front. I think that's already attractive. It was hu- hugely attractive to me. Um, if we can put some, like translate that and put some wins on the board, I think just the culture that we're going to play with and um, the system that we're, the style that we're going to play, I think plenty of people are going to want to come play. Sweet. Come join the Redbacks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really good as well because he has a relationship with Nixie. We Huge, haven't yep. had that in the past where the men's coach and their women's coach are buddy-buddy tight. Yep. So I think it's a really good thing. And then also Nixie's new role as general manager of operations mm-hmm. where it's called as well. Yeah. You know, they can always just have sit-down meetings and then they can run the club as one rather yeah, than two sure. separate and it is competing like yeah. yeah instead of competing um be, being there together and i think it'll be a huge help for tim um obviously still relatively new to a head coaching position mm-hmm. um having nixie someone as experienced as he is to go to and ask questions and have that support and someone he trusts i think it's going to be huge like yeah huge and i know that nixie's planning on doing the coaches for coaches as well yeah that's good as yeah. the women program in there as well mm-hmm. it's just all looking up for Redbacks, you know what I'm we saying? We do the right things, one foot in front of the other, and we'll see what happens. Big things for Redbacks. Join the Redbacks. <laughs> um, what are the goals for the season? I know I asked earlier if you'd had already planned them. You said you're going to in like a month's time, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, you personally, what are your goals? 
oh, I want to I want to finish the year wanting to play. <laughs> like I yeah, want to yeah. have fun. Like uh, fun's a big one. Um, I guess just get back to me. Like I think. <sighs> The last couple of years has been so much around building a system and a culture and trying to be that per- that pillar of this is what we want to do. Mm-hmm. I think coming here into an already established um, group is going to be so nice to just remember like why I play in the first place. So I want to com- I want to be up there and compete for Defensive Player of the Year. That would be sick. Um, so that's definitely a, a personal goal. Um, and help get this team to a playoff berth would be sick. Yeah, like, definitely. So at the end of the year, NBL won awards. They're going to play this clip of you saying, "I want Defensive Player of the Year." Oh, I don't. I want to compete for that award for sure. But you know, Steph Gorman's like, she's solid, so she'll be tough to beat. But I think if we can win some games and be up there in defensive rating, that's going to help us for sure. Are you don't have to say yes or no, but are you a leader of the team? Or are you going to be the? <sighs> I don't know. Um, Mickey, Mickey, Raya, and Beck do, yeah, do have done such a great job in that role. Like, if um, I'm at the end of the day, I'm going to say what I what I feel like I have to say anyway when we play. Um, being a point guard's kind of your role anyway, um, and I'll support Mickey in whatever she wants. If she wants help, like I'll be there. Um, if not, even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it'd be nice, kind of just yeah, again to just get back and just play and not not feel like you're getting swarmed by expectations yeah. and, and stuff out. Do you have any weird like superstitions you do before a game? Like have to put your left shoe on first or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm left shoe and left sock before I even touch my right, right foot. It's so weird. <laughs> I think that. Yeah, I guess Yeah, because most weird. people do both socks and then, but yeah. nah, left, yeah, I don't know why I've done it since I was a kid and it's kind of embarrassing. Everyone yeah. points it out. <laughs> what, about, what about your post game? Like, what are you doing? Like, you, how's your recovery or? I'm um, horrendous. I'm but, so yeah. bad. So bad. I think I ice bath maybe once a month, yeah. <laughs> like after games. Uh, this year it'll probably be a bit better because I think last year was just trying to get showered and trying to get to his game. So yeah, him course. being um, here, it'll be nice to probably be able to, you know get in the ice bath and shower and, and stretch and probably do it. What about like, on the mental side? Like, are you thinking back on the game? Do you rewatch your games? I'm um, horrendous. He would even like their whole team would even know because I'm sure Nixie would comment all the time that. If you don't watch film, George, uh, George used to watch like she'd be up there watching everything. I watched. Yeah, he was your coach for Wolves, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, I used to get brought up every single. Oh, that's so embarrassing. You're the pinnacle. <laughs> like, if you want to watch film, just follow George. Oh, it was so embarrassing. I watch way too much. Are you good at um, studying? Yeah, film? like I, I think. I enjoy that analytical side, like, mm-hmm. um, and I enjoy like knowing that there's areas that I can improve, and because I think the more you play, like. There are definitely areas of the game where I think, oh, yeah, no, you were really solid here in this game. And then you go back and watch the film and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. You did that poorly. <laughs> like, so I definitely watch plenty of film. And, um, as soon you get, as like, I- down on yourself or, like, you're pretty like, okay, I oh, know I can improve this for next time? Uh, I think I'm the first to, to take the mickey out of myself, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I remember a lot of film sessions last year that Tim would cut clips of me doing something stupid and um, he'd be like, so what's not good here? And I'm like, well... <laughs> it's pretty obvious. <laughs> like fouled with one point one seconds on the shot yeah, clock, yeah. kind of thing. Um, I don't think I get down on myself. I think, um, yeah, I think I just think you know you've got plenty more games left in your career to to make adjustments and to over five hundred. Let's go. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sick. But, um, yeah, I think I just think you know as long as I'm playing and I'm feeling like um, each game I go out there and and I try to be as close to obviously perfection's what everyone chases, but mm. that's irrational um as close to what the team needs me to be for as long as as long as i'm out there um i think that's all that's all you can do mm. i got one more question okay you obviously said you want Caden clark shooting a three-pointer for yep. your life you have to lock someone down defensively <laughs> you or we'll go caitlin clark again me? you yep Damn, she's baby. an athlete like don't get me she's way bouncier than me but i, I think defensively way more disciplined Okay. You think you're a better defender than Caitlin yeah. Clark? Do you think you could go like Div One College and? Or I don't think I'm a bit small. <laughs> think I'm a bit small. No, we are called too short for the league. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think getting exposure to that level and just um, being around it, whether you're playing or not, I think it just. Like even talking to Brooke, who's come back, obviously playing for Idaho and being around other people. Kayla was a big vouch for college. Um, 
But I think just being around that level, I think you kind of you learn and you develop without actually being on the floor. Yeah. Like so, I think that would have been cool to experience. And links to their credit, like when I turned down college that first year to stay, Andy was very good at if you wanted to go after that, they'd put their feelers out for me and and see what interest was in in the American system for me. So I think either way, I think you just you just got to pick a pick a path that's for you and know that yours is going to be different to anyone else. Like Sammy was always really good with that for me and understanding that yours doesn't have to be the same as as hers and just really back yourself to make as much change and development throughout your career and just absorb everything like yeah. be a sponge like even now like Mickey was such a big pull for me because I'm like she can teach me so much she's played all over the world played for played in junior national teams like just such a smart human and um that's what that's what I'm craving that was big pull when it comes so just know your path and stick to it Good advice. All right, that'll be it for this episode. Thank you for thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for our sponsors for bringing the show to you. Make sure you follow, guys. We've got some big things planned for the season. I can't wait. So follow, please. Uh, rate some five stars on Spotify. Do what you need to do. And that's it. Ciao. You are now listening to the Too Short for the League podcast, hosted by Caleb Kingston. 